Hi everyone, today we're going to be looking at the Gritzner Model GZ. Uh, the sewing machine in front of the camera is a Kenmore badged model number 117740. Uh, this machine was made under many names and many model numbers, so I'm going to put a picture in the video so you can check that picture out and see if this applies to your model number. There will also be more information in the description below. I do not have access to a manual for this machine. If one becomes available to me, I will post it in the description below. Um, we're going to first uh, go over the machine itself. Then we're going to wind a bobbin. We'll thread the machine. And then we're going to do a few sewing tests on the machine. So let's get started. Um, first of all, um, this machine normally has two spools. This uh, this one is missing one, uh, but you can use twin needles on this machine. And if you are un unfortunate like me and only have one spool pin, you can always wind two bobbins with the thread that you want to use on top and place them on the spool and use them that way. Um, we have a couple thread guides. Uh, this knob regulates the presser foot pressure light switch is over here. We've got a take-up lever or take-up arm right here. Your tension unit, your needle position, and you have infinite adjustment from left to right with stops for left, center, and right. Uh, this knob regulates stitch width and also sets up the buttonhole feature. So if you put it on zero, for example, you cannot move your stitch width above zero and you have your straight stitch locked in. Uh, you can also lock it at any number between zero and four. And when you select the buttonhole on the dial, you have little indentations. When you move the knob, you can fill it at two and four. It kind of locks into place for you. I'm going to leave that at four. That's where I normally have it. Um, this is your stitch width regulator. Again, zero is straight stitch. Anything above zero, uh, zigzag or decorative stitch. This is your stitch length regulator. Down is forward and up is reverse. Um, if you'd like to lock your stitch length in place, you uh, turn the knob clockwise to the stitch length you want, and then it will also match in reverse the same stitch length. Um, coming over to the right, we have our bobbin winder, our hand wheel, and you can't see it, but in the center of the hand wheel is your clutch. We'll cover that more in a moment. Down here is your bobbin winding tensioner. This is your feed dog drop, so it allows you to drop the feed over here um, for free motion quilting or darning. Um, coming over here, we have our needle bar with our thread guide above the needle and our needle. Um, real quickly on needles for this machine, it uses standard uh, 705, 130, uh, 15 by 1 or HA1 needles. These, all these things mean uh, the same type of needle in different countries. Um, th this needle has a flat side. That flat side needs to face the back of the machine at all times. You always install it with the flat side of the needle facing the back of the machine. If you do not, you'll have stitch issues. When placing the needle in the machine, you want to make sure it's all the way up into the needle bar before tightening down the securing thumb screw. Um, this machine also uses high shank feet. So high shank feet are readily available. Um, they're commonly used on industrial sewing machines. I'm not saying this sewing machine is industrial. Um, you can also buy a high shank adapter so that you can use snap on feet with this sewing machine. Um, this is kind of your bobbin access cover, but uh, the way these machines are designed with a front facing uh, bobbin, this does not work for anyone really. Um, you probably won't be using that other than possibly for sight. So we're going to leave that one alone. Okay, let's move on to winding a bobbin.
So to wind a bobbin, the first thing you want to do is go ahead and grab your thread. I'm going to use a cone of thread, but your thread would normally be coming off the spool right here. You want to grab that first tension guide, the second tension guide, and the third one. And then you want to bring your thread over to the bobbin winder tensioner and make sure it's secure underneath the thread guide on the left and the discs to the right. Um, this machine uses standard class 15 bobbins. And you want to take your thread and place it through any hole in the bobbin and place it over the post. You don't have to line anything up. It's held on by friction. And press your bobbin winder in here. Now, before we start winding the bobbin, we want to declutch the sewing mechanism so it doesn't sew while we wind. So we're going to hold the outside of the hand wheel and the center clutch, the center knob on the hand wheel, we want to turn counterclockwise so that the machine doesn't sew while we wind a bobbin. A quick note, if you want to wind while you sew, you certainly can do that. So now we've got the bobbin winder ready. We're going to wind the bobbin, hold the thread tail, and press your foot pedal. Okay, like you saw, the, when the bobbin is full, the bobbin winder stops and ejects the bobbin. Remove the bobbin by pulling it off to the left. Go ahead and cut your thread. And we're going to thread the bobbin case. So this machine also uses standard class 15 bobbin cases. You want the inside of the bobbin case to face you and you want the thread on the bobbin to be coming off of the top and to the right. So place that in your bobbin case. Uh, find this notch for the thread and work your thread all the way around until it's right in this U shape under the tensioning spring. All right, let's install that bobbin case. So you won't really be able to see this well, but there's only one way this bobbin case will go in. The finger needs to go at about 12 o'clock position. Um, and this hole needs to go over the shaft. You can kind of see it in the video right there above my finger. Um, so in order to do that, pull the latch, place the bobbin into the hook area with the finger at 12 o'clock, release the latch. Give that a thread a good tug to make sure that your bobbin case is secure and then you can go ahead and lower your machine. Now, it, some models of machines will have a bobbin access door here. A big bobbin access door that lifts up this way. And if you have one of those, use that bobbin access door. But there's no way my hand or fingers are going to fit through this opening, even if I were to take this plate off. Okay, we're going to move on to threading now. So to thread this machine, um, I've taken the thread out from bobbin winding so that we can start from scratch. So from your thread spool coming off here, you want to go through this first thread guide in the back. You want to come through the next thread guide in the front. I like to use both holes to prevent tangles of my thread, but you may use only one if you wish, or one for each thread if you're using two threads. Make sure before you thread the tension unit that your presser foot is up. That lever is on the back, so just lift that lever up to make sure the foot is up. So you're going to thread from right to left around the tension unit going straight up. You're going to go up to your take up arm or your take up lever and you're going to thread from right to left through the hole in it. You're going to come straight down and there is a thread guide right above the needle. You want to catch that thread guide. And on this machine, the needle threads from front to back. I'm going to do that off camera and I'll be right back when it's threaded. Okay, now that we have the needle threaded, I went ahead and placed the foot down so that I had better visibility for, um, for threading that needle. 
What we want to do now is we want to reactivate the sewing mechanism. So we're going to hold the outside of the hand wheel and we're going to turn the inside knob clockwise to tighten it. Then we want the needle to make um, a movement all the way down and all the way back up again. And we're going to pull on that thread tail and this loop that pops up when we pull is going to be the thread from the bobbin. So give that a tug too. Make sure you have both ends of the thread. Once you have that, you may need to trim it like I do. Not necessary though. Uh, place the thread underneath the foot and towards the back of the machine. So right now the machine's ready to sew. Okay, now that we have the machine threaded, um, we're going to do some test uh, sews. So I have um, some kind of medium lightweight fabric here. It's heavier than quilting cotton, but uh, probably not qualified to be called a medium fabric. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started with a straight stitch. So hold your thread tails when you begin to sew. I like to place the needle down into the fabric before I press the pedal. So in forward, we'll reverse the back tack and go forward again. This machine has really good speed control. Okay. Now let's do a bit shorter stitch. So what we're going to do is tighten this up. As you can see, this machine is very smooth, um, very quick, relatively quiet for a machine of this uh, type. Right. So moving on to a zigzag stitch, um, let's make sure this is on zigzag first. Uh, anything above zero is a zigzag, so let's just start with a two for a narrow zigzag. And yep, let's leave the length at about a two as well. And the zigzag and the serpentine stitch do not require cams, they're built in. Okay, let's do a wider zigzag. Oops, almost lost our thread there. This is kind of because, this is definitely because I'm using a thread cone rather than a um, spool of thread. It's coming off too high and it's causing it to come out of the machine. It's best practice if you're going to use a thread comb that you actually um, wind a bobbin and then place the bobbin on the spool rather than use it directly from the cone. Okay, okay so now we've tested out the zigzag. Let's move on to the other built-in stitch, which is the serpentine stitch. I'm going to leave that at the widest and I'm going to shorten the stitch length I think to about one and a half. And um, with this machine, I only received one cam, so we're just going to do what's on the one cam. But I believe um, there were at least six cams available for this uh, model of machine. So we're going to start out with, I guess, two. I'm going to shorten the stitch length to one for that stitch. Okay, it does 
look like the picture on the cam. So that's a good sign. And now let's try stitch one. I can't remember what it looks like. It's on the back side of the cam. Looks like we have a, a joining stitch there. You could also use it for sewing anything that was elastic. So let me take this off of the machine. I had a little peek myself and see what the back side of it looks like. Okay, this is the front side. So up at the top, you have the focus. I'm hoping that's focusing a little better. They're really nice stitches, but if it doesn't focus, you won't know that. Anyway, we have the longest stitch, level five. Then we have a two and a half straight stitch. We have a two millimeter wide zigzag, then a four millimeter wide zigzag. We then have a serpentine stitch. I'm not sure what this stitch is called. Uh, and then at the bottom, we have a stitch used for joining and uh, attaching elastic or sewing kind of stretch fabric. And then on the back side, you'll see that the tension looks really good. We don't have anything being pulled down to the bottom from the top or vice versa. I'd say overall, that's a good stitch sample. Okay, next, everybody wants to know um, what these older vintage machines are capable of, and the standard test is to do eight layers of blue jean denim. So I'm going to do that test, um, but I will just say this, most well-built vintage sewing machines will sew this amount of denim. All right, and take a look at how thick that is. Um, it's not really my favorite test. I don't like doing this to a machine personally, but um, this is just kind of the standard. So since we're already in zigzag mode, let's go ahead and do a zigzag stitch. Um, on thick fabric, you generally do a longer stitch. So I'm just gonna go ahead and lengthen it out all the way to the longest stitch. And I always like to place my needle down into the fabric, so I'll go ahead and do that before we start, and off we go. Now I'm going to take it slow because this is a size 14 needle. If you're going to sew this kind of stuff, you're going to want a size 16 or 18 needle, preferably. Okay, let's go back to a straight stitch. Alrighty, let's take a look at the results. You can see that eight layers of denim is about the mo most that will fit under this foot too. Okay. So we've got a really nice zigzag and a really nice straight stitch on top and on the bottom. It looks almost exactly the same and that's a great sign. So there you go. There's your uh, torture test and we'll go through them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Nice tight stitches too. Okay, um, that's it for the sewing test. Okay, earlier in the video I started to talk about this, uh, but I decided it would be better left until the end. So let's cover the cam mechanism on this machine. Um, underneath this door that folds down is how you access your cams. Uh, in order to insert or remove your cams, you need to make sure that your stitch width is set to zero. 
and then your cam will just pull out. It may be a little tough. And you'll notice that your cam has a little flat spot right at in it. So when you're reinstalling it, you need to align the flat spot on the uh, metal shaft with the flat spot on the cam, and you'll just push it in. Uh, you'll also notice your cams are numbered. So this is number two, and this is the stitch that it does. And then on the back, this is number one, and this is the stitch that it does. It's missing some paint there, but that's the joining stitch we did earlier. Um, so in order to access what's on the cam, this is the dial you would use. So this zigzag is built into this machine, and that's what it's selected now. If you turn this knob, you'll notice a number one. Number one corresponds to the number one pattern on the cam. If you turn the knob again, you'll notice that you have a serpentine stitch. The serpentine stitch is built into this machine. You don't need a cam for it. And then turning it one more time, you'll see number two, and number two will correspond to the pattern on the cam that you have installed. So um, one more thing to note, in order to use any of the cam stitches, once you have this installed, you will need to turn the stitch with dial above number one. Generally, number four is where you want it for all of the cams, but you can make the patterns more narrow if you wish by turning it below four to anywhere above zero. And that's kind of how the cam mechanism works on this machine.